Um, there were some reports out that President Trump told members of that tech meeting yesterday that the Senate health care bill needed to have more part. Can you shed some light on what it is he's not pleased with in the legislation that's being drafted? And um, can you also tell us why he would feel that way after holding a press conference in the Rose Garden supporting the House's version of the health care bill? I mean, the President clearly wants a bill that has heart in it. Um, he believes that uh, health care is something that is near and dear to so many families and individuals. Um, he made it clear from the beginning that those that was one of his priorities, and as the Senate works its way through this bill, as the House did, um, any ideas are welcome to strengthen it, to make it more affordable, more accessible, and deliver the care that it needs. Uh, but this is an area that the President believes passionately about. He cares. He understands the role that health care plays in so many people's lives and their families. Um, and he wants to make sure that we do everything we can to provide the best option for him as Obamacare continues uh, to fail. Is there, and is there a specific part of this bill, though, that leads him well, to believe that the Senate is doing something? There's, I, I'm not, again, th this is an ongoing discussion with Senate leaders and individual senators that he's had. You know that we brought a lot of those individuals to the White House, uh, and there's been staff level meetings as well, Secretary Price and others. Uh, so I'm not going to get into the private discussions that have occurred, uh, but I will just say that uh, the more that we can do to produce a bill um, as it works its way through the process that achieves the President's goals, I think that's something that we can all agree on. Jane. Thank you. Two questions. Um, also on Otto, the President today said that um, he, he thinks it's terrible what happened to Otto. Do you have any more details? Do you have any more details on specifically what he endured there? I, I, I do not, and I, we would not share them at this point. Okay. I think there's – so. Um, and second question, yep. there are reports that your role is changing here at the White House. I wanted to know if you can address those reports. Are they true or not? And if so, can you tell us what, what's in store? Right here. Uh, so you can keep taking your selfies and tell a few folks. Um, <laughs> so you watch it every day. Um, so, uh, but look, I, I, it's no secret we've had a couple of vacancies, including our communications director has gone for a while. Uh, we've been seeking input from individuals as far as ideas that they have. We've been meeting with potential people that, uh, that may be of service to this administration. I don't think that should come as any surprise. Uh, but we're always looking for ways to, to do a better job of um, articulating the President's message and his agenda. And uh, we'll continue to have those discussions internally. When we have an announcement of a personal nature, we'll let you know if that's a good deal. Kevin. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I want to circle back on the Georgia 6th. Is it fair to say the President will be watching with great interest uh, the race that happens tonight? And what's his message? I know he had a couple tweets. What's his message to the people of the Peach State as they consider uh, the direction for that particular district? And if I could follow up. Um, okay, so just so we're clear, I'm not going to comment on political races. That being said, uh, as I've noted before, it's no surprise that the President is going to support uh, Republicans uh, up and down the ticket, especially to uh, maintain our majorities in the House and the Senate as we move forward. Uh, so obviously, as you've noted, he has tweeted about that. He believes that there's a clear and stark choice, uh, but I'll leave it at that. Let me ask you about uh, the communication shop here. I know that you're probably wearing more than one hat at the moment, and yet there's been a great deal of uh, unrest, uh, certainly in this room and perhaps in other spaces, about a lack of press briefings, a lack of communication with you directly outside of, say, the office. I just wanted to know if you would sort of unpack the idea behind fewer on-camera briefings uh, just to sort of help make sense of what's going on. Um, sure. I mean, I, what I'll tell you is I've said it, look, I, I've multiple times prior to actually taking the job in December and January, uh, explain that, you know, we're going to do what we can to communicate uh, our message. We will, uh, we have a tremendous respect for the First Amendment, your ability to do your job um, and, and report uh, and seek out ideas, uh, and then we're going to work with you. I think the briefing is one aspect of what we do. Um, we're here really early in the morning and really late at night, available to all of your questions, whether it's email or in person. Uh, this is one avenue to do that. Uh, we've, as you've noted, opened up um, Skype questions to bring more people into the briefing room. Uh, but we have uh, done you know, multiple more opportunities for people to interact with the President, according to several folks that have been here for several administrations. Uh, we've looked at a lot of data that suggests that uh, when you look at the number of availabilities and, and interviews that the President's given, uh, it's pretty significant compared to past administrations. Uh, so I think that we, while you guys will always advocate for greater transparency and more access, uh, I think that we have done a very good job of not just providing opportunities here at a daily briefing, uh, but also making ourselves available as a staff, you know, almost 20, 24 hours a day when it comes down to it. And I think 
Uh, you look at the steps that we've taken to, to give access uh, to reporters, uh, and I do think it's pretty significant. I understand you'll always have issues. You always want more, um, and that's fair. I mean, that's your right. Uh, that's what a lot of the press is, is there to advocate for. You have an association that does that as well, um, and I think that you'll continue to fight for it. We'll continue to do our job, and hopefully, uh, but I, I, I do believe that if you look at it holistically, you'll see that we have a staff that's uh, very accommodating, uh, very tries to get to res in responsive to your questions. Sean. Sarah. Sean. Thanks, John. The president today said that if Otto Warmbier had been brought home sooner, the results would have been a lot different. Does the president believe that the Obama administration is partly responsible for what happened to Otto Warmbier? I, the president was pleased that he was able to work with the State Department and get Otto home as soon as he could. Uh, but I think when you, um, when you realize what happened, uh, the President know, you know, believes uh, that had it happened sooner or quicker, uh, potentially there might have been additional medical resources that could have been provided. Uh, he's just obviously saddened by this entire situation and, um, and just would have hoped that it could have been resolved earlier. John, oh, yeah. thanks, John. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask, uh, the House Freedom Caucus and at least three GOP senators have uh, suggested that the August recess should either be scrapped or uh, just uh, greatly shortened until more business can be done. Uh, we're sure we're going to Obamacare repeal bill through, uh, at least make the first steps on tax reform. Is that something, could the President support either scrapping or shortening the, uh, what, August recess? Or I, I think that, that that's going to be up to, to the House and the Senate to determine their recesses. They don't – generally, we don't get involved in their schedule. And so okay, I, I'll, let, I'll let Speaker Ryan and Leader McConnell decide what's appropriate uh, in terms of their – Is the President satisfied with the pace that Congress is moving? If, if, the, if we continue to move forward with health care uh, the way that we're – the way that we're – we've been told we're going to, and the, that I think we're great. We've got our priorities. We want to get health care done. We want to get tax, tax uh, reform done. And obviously the President has spoken very extensively about infrastructure. If we can get those done, I think we feel really good. Hallie. Can you get those done by August? I'm sorry. Just, can you get those done by August? It, it, uh, we'll go as quick as Congress wants. Uh, you know, that's it's a little out of our hands. But as soon as Congress can do it, we'll do what we can. You saw when the President, when the, the House had its bill up, the President uh, worked fear, uh, feverishly to make sure that he did everything he could to get it over the finish line. I think we'll do the same for all of those other scenarios as well. Alex. Hey, Sean, I have one on North Korea, but I'd like to follow up on health care there. Yeah. Uh, you were around when Republicans were criticizing <coughs> Democrats back in the day of Obamacare for it being, as you put it fairly recently, jammed down people's throats. You said it was rushed, it was secretive, that was the criticism. So how is what's happening now with this bill getting crafted, frankly, behind closed doors, any different from what Republicans criticized Democrats for doing? I think we wanted to be part of the process back then. If you look at what the you, you look at what Senator Schumer said both in February to a MoveOn.org or, or call, uh, where he said that you know we're, no one's going to be no Democrats going to go near this, and what he said in a letter in uh, May 9th that he said that no Democrats would be part of an effort uh, that would repeal Obamacare. So they have chosen to take themselves not to not make themselves part of this process. Uh, there is when Senator McConnell brings the bill forward, I'm sure that there'll be plenty of time uh, to have debate. It's the Senate. There's always plenty of time to debate. He's talking about uh, voting next week. Well, actually. okay, but again, I'm not going to get ahead of. I'll let Senator McConnell determine the schedule, Senate schedule and run the Senate that he that he sees fit. But let's not mistake ourselves with how they approach this thing. Their leader, Senator Schumer, made it very clear on at least two separate occasions that they didn't want to be part of this process. They didn't want to repeal and replace Obamacare. They were happy with Obamacare. We believe Obamacare is failing. We want a better system for the American people, a patient-centric health care system. Uh, that brings down costs and gives more accessibility to people. That's it. They chose not to, uh, made it very clear that they didn't want to engage in this process. So, you know, to turn around now and to second guess, uh, that, 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 that's something they should take up with their own leader. On North Korea, um, does the President support a travel ban to those heading to North Korea? And given Senator McCain's comments that he believes Otto Warmbier was murdered, is it this administration's position that North Korea killed that young man? On the first one, I think the State Department is mulling uh, additional uh, advisories, and I'll, I'll leave it to them. That's that's how they – our travel is um, – restrictions and such is run through the State Department, so I would refer you to them. And again, I don't want to, uh, before uh, anything further goes on with, with respect to him, I, I'm not going to comment on whether or not uh, his, his situation, how it was handled until we have further information on that. Trey. Uh, 
Thanks, Sean. Two questions for you. From the perspective of the administration, how transparent have lawmakers been on Capitol Hill when drafting this health care bill? How what? How transparent have they been? Well, I mean, I think that we've had a very robust discussion with lawmakers, uh, first in the House and now on the Senate, um, who have ideas and input. But ultimately, each of those bills uh, is the product of their own chamber. I mean, the House, we obviously uh, had plenty of sessions with, with members uh, of the House as they move forward. We've done a lot in the Senate. Um, but each of those Senate, each of those chambers runs their own um, chamber, respectively, by, their, by the leadership they have. It's not our job to go in and dictate how they do it. Uh, we have been tried to be as helpful as we can throughout this process um, by highlighting the need uh, for repeal and replacing a failed system. And we'll continue to do that. But it's not for me to get up and talk about how their, uh, their process works through each of their respective chambers. Can I follow up on Steve's question on Russian sanctions? Uh, just very plainly, uh, a yes or no answer. Does President Trump believe that the Russian government interfered in the 2016 elections? I, I think I have not sat down and talked to him about that specific thing. Obviously, we've been dealing with a lot of other issues today. I'd be glad to touch base. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, this conversation about Russian interference in our elections, there's 16 uh, intelligence agencies that say that they did. Uh, the former FBI director said that without a doubt the Russians interfered. I understand. Interfered. I've seen the reports. Uh, does the president share uh, those views? I, I have not sat down and asked him about a specific reaction to him, so I'd be glad to touch base and get back to you. Yeah. Didn't you say it was fake news, Sean? Didn't the president say that Russia was fake news? Sean, regarding the president's Cuba policy, the yeah. Cuban foreign minister uh, just yesterday said that it is a grotesque spectacle. Does the president have any reaction to that? The, the policy that the president laid out for Cuba, first and foremost, is something that will help uh, the Cuban people. Uh, it will stop making, uh, encouraging payments to the military uh, and help um, them economically lift themselves up. Uh, that is the greatest form of human rights that we can uh, push for right now, to make sure that those efforts that we do and that the American citizens who travel or do business in Cuba follow the law. Our goal is to make sure that the policies from this government um, first and foremost help the Cuban people. And I think that's, that's what the President has done uh, and we will continue to advocate for. Okay, second question, if I might, about the tapes between the President and James Comey. Were those tapes made? Do they exist? And will the President be releasing them to the House Intelligence Committee by Friday? The President has said that he will make an announcement on this. I expect it this week. Um, and so when he's ready to, to make that announcement, we'll let you know. How's that? Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow in Iowa. Thank you. No questions? Okay.